Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. This particular message is indeed for Christian women, women who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, as the scripture commands, we enter into covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you who are listening who have not yet done so, this is what you need to do first. And we were all in that condition once. It doesn't mean anything bad about you. It just means that that's what's needed first. You see, no one can expect the blessings of being in covenant with Jesus Christ if they have not yet done what he commanded in order to enter his kingdom. So Jesus said, unless a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So beyond that, though, because there are times when I need to address those of you who have obeyed the gospel. And the title of this video is something along the lines of when faith falters. And someone who says that their faith has never faltered is not telling the truth. We all have moments of weakness. And what is the difference between how we walk, the walk of faith, and the condemnation that comes upon people uh, when they are sometimes new Christians? So we want to understand that, yes, we strive to walk in the light at all times. We strive to be obedient no matter what. We strive to understand the Lord's will for our lives. That doesn't mean, however, that we never stumble, that we never get confused, that we never have doubt. That's why I wanted to make this video for you, my sisters who are new Christians walking in faith. I've used this example a lot on this channel. I'm going to use it again today. Imagine for a moment that you are a, a parent. You're a mother, and you have a little child who's learning how to walk. And that little child uh, begins to walk, and they're all excited and happy that they're walking, and then they fall down. Can you imagine yourself, and I know there's abusive people, but please, this is an example of a loving parent. Can you imagine yourself going to that child and saying, you worthless, useless thing, how could I ever have given you life? Well, of course not. And if we being fallen and fallen flesh and even people in the world can see that that isn't the way a parent conducts themselves with a child who's learning how to walk. When we are walking as a new Christian, we know that God's love is greater than our love. And so when he's brought us into his kingdom, he's redeemed us by the blood of his son. In his mercy and grace, he provided a way out for us. He is not going to stand over us and say, oh, well, I sent my son to die for you, and now you've stumbled and fallen, so I'm going to throw you away. When we are learning how to walk in the light, just as a loving parent understands that a baby is going to go boom every now and then. And just as a loving parent recognizes that a little baby doesn't know everything that a full-grown adult knows, so it is that our Heavenly Father, with those who are young in the faith, he will lead you. He will show you the way. But Satan is the accuser, and Satan is a spirit. So perhaps we're walking as a new Christian, and we've been baptized in Jesus' name, and then we realize that there's something in our life that is not pleasing unto the Lord. Perhaps we're addicted to something. Perhaps we are um, taking a, a, a medication, and then we find out that medication is sorcery. We can listen to the accuser who will come along. The moment we realize there's something in our flesh that needs correction, the accuser will come along and say, oh, well, look at you. You failed. 
your salvation isn't real. God is going to throw you into hell. When really what's going on is the natural process that we all go through as Christians, being washed, being washed by the water of the word. So when we're washed, according to what the scripture commands, that means that sometimes there are going to be things that the Lord will bring to our attention that need to be cleaned up. So what do we do? What do we do when these things happen? Well, the first thing is that we realize that we have a faithful high priest, Jesus Christ, who is tempted in every way that we are tempted. And he knows what it is to struggle against the things that tempt us. So when we read about Jesus Christ in the wilderness and the enemy came to him and tempted him, we realize that he answered with the word of God on each and every every um, temptation that was levied against him. But for someone who's a new Christian, often they're very unfamiliar with the scripture. And so they're kind of confounded when these attacks come along. There is, however, an answer for that. You see, we begin with the shield of faith. When we're looking at spiritual armor, we, we can see the, that there's the shield of faith and there's the helmet of salvation. So what protects our mind is the knowledge of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the knowledge that we have obeyed the gospel. So when the enemy comes, we don't have to know every single detail of scripture. In fact, no one can do that. But we can say to the enemy, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. It doesn't say in the scripture that I need to to um, to somehow be an example of a great faith the minute I'm born into the kingdom of God. It doesn't say that those who obey the gospel now have to be absolutely 100% totally perfect every single day or else they are discarded by the Lord. You see, we we have the helmet of salvation. We know that we obey the gospel. So the enemy will come along and say, oh, well, you did this wrong. You did that wrong. You're useless. You're hopeless. And he's doing that in order to convince us that we've lost our salvation or that we never had it. And in some way, that now all we can do is give up. This is what the accuser does. And he comes to us in our mind. He comes in our mind and he says, oh, you're not worth it. You've failed. But again, I want to remind you about a loving parent who is teaching a baby how to walk, that we don't act that way. And our heavenly father, his love is far more perfect than anything we can imagine. What do we do? We cry out, just like a little baby cries out. So the little baby is learning how to walk, and they fall down, and they cry out. And then the ma mama comes and gathers up that child in her arms and says, but you are doing really well. Just Let's just get up, and, and I'll, I'll walk with you for a little while, and I'll, I'll show you how to do it. You see, this is what our Heavenly Father does. This is what he does with us. Now, when God made us, so let's go to Psalm 33. Psalm 33. And let's read here verse 6. So Psalm 33 and verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. So God made the world by the word. Now, we can go into this a little bit more. Let's go to Romans 120. Please stick with me. Please stick with me. You'll see why, why this is relevant in just a moment. So in Romans chapter 1 and verse 20, let's read here. Romans 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So a word is not visible. 
For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So the things that you see show you the invisible things. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So God, when he formed the world, he, he spoke it into being. When we read in John 1, 1, so let's go to John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We see that God is his Word, that God, when he spoke, he created the world. And let's go again to Genesis to understand that this is written throughout the Scripture about how it is the worlds were formed. Verse 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. As Christians, when we have heard the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ and obeyed it, there has been a transformation in us in that we who were once of the darkness now are born into the kingdom of light. We have the light in us now and we can walk according to the light even though we are yet in fallen flesh. So if you consider our body. Let's look at our body. Our body is a physical thing. It's like a seed. It's a corruptible seed. It's something that is not everlasting. Our body will one day die. Our body will one day be broken. But a Christian who's been baptized in water and spirit, as Jesus Christ said was necessary, when we are born of water and spirit, Now we have the light dwelling in us. We are in a corruptible seed, a husk, as it were, a fallen flesh, but in us is in the light. And daily, what we do when we learn how to walk as a Christian is we follow the light. We do what is commanded in God's word. When we are thinking about being a Christian, we know that we have to obey what his word says. We have to walk in his ways or we don't love him. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and begin in verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, for by grace ye are saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You see, the way a Christian walks in faith is they remember that they have obeyed the gospel. They know that the gospel message is one that many reject because it's so simple. It's so simple to see that the word of God says there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And it's very simple to see and very easy to see if you simply read the word of God, that salvation comes when we have our sins remitted by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When we do this thing, then we are dead to our old flesh, our old man. We have been renewed in the light of Jesus Christ. And now we can have the Holy Spirit. So when we are have our sins remitted, and we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the water and spirit that Jesus Christ spoke of. 
So now we have dwelling in us the spirit of the living God, and that light is an everlasting light. The way that we walk in holiness, many people wonder about holiness. What holiness is, is it's choosing to obey the spirit of God, the word of God. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So when we walk in the spirit, it means that we're obedient to the scripture. It means that we love Jesus Christ and the way we manifest our love for Jesus Christ is by being obedient unto him. And when the enemy comes along, when we're a new Christian and says, oh, but you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. Therefore, you are condemned that this is a trick because you may not be doing this or that right. Just like a little baby doesn't know everything yet. But when we see something that we're not doing right and we cry out to God, he will show us the way. And the way that we communicate with our Heavenly Father is in the name of Jesus Christ because we are in covenant with him. And we have a right now. We have a right to seek him on his throne. We could go to the throne of grace and say, Father, I don't know how to do this. I don't know the way. And this is the walk of obedience and the walk of faith. This is how we remember that we didn't wash our sins away. The grace of God, when we are, we are saved by grace, by faith, we realize that our sins were washed away through a simple act of obedience. We heard the word of God and we did what it said. And when that happens, and I can testify of this, when I obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, I knew that I was washed. I knew my sins had been remitted. I knew that the light was in me in a different way. I knew that I had been delivered from the power of darkness. And this is a gift of grace. It is not something that we can do ourselves. And there are a lot of people who get the cart before the horse. So they think that, for example, to wear a veil is going to get them into the kingdom or following the law is going to get them into the kingdom. But we have to do first things first because obedience unto the law and Jesus said, not one jot or tittle shall be taken from the law until all things be fulfilled. So the law has not gone away and we still need to obey God. But the way that we are able to overcome our flesh, our husk, and walk in the light is by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then as we follow him, as we dwell in the light, the sinfulness, the things that we could never have overcome before, now we can overcome. You see, a Christian at the moment of baptism is not an overcomer yet. The way that we overcome is to continue in the word of God. Jesus Christ said, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's, let's read here. Pardon me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's begin in verse 4 here. Or in verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, not a second person of a triune Godhead, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light, so we just read about that. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts 
to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, was the face wherein people could behold the Father. The Son of God, who is born at a specific moment of time, in time, manifested his Father unto the world. He spoke his Father's words, and he manifested his Father's name. The Son is not the Father, and the Son is not a second deity. There is only one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. God was in Christ. It's what Jesus Christ said. It was what was prophesied in the Old Testament, and it's what came into being in a specific moment in time when the Son of God, who is begotten in the womb of a virgin by the power of the Holy Ghost, that this baby grew to be a man, and when he was baptized, his father came to fully dwell in him, and him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And after Jesus Christ walked on the earth and spoke his father's word, manifesting his father's name, and then was crucified, pouring out his innocent blood to redeem all those who would obey his gospel, then, after that, when he was resurrected and glorified on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God was poured out upon the disciples of Jesus Christ. And this is manifested when we speak in another tongue, an unknown tongue, and we glorify God. This is the Spirit. So water and Spirit, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. But let's read on, because there's more than that. That's the beginning of our life as a Christian. Verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So how does a Christian overcome sin? By the treasure, the light that is in you, the spirit of the living God, the word of the living God dwelling in you. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Jesus said, Take, we must take up our cross daily and follow him. In the Old Testament, Joshua said, Choose ye this day who, whom ye will serve. The walk of a Christian is a daily walk. We, we die daily to our flesh, and daily we choose to obey the living God. And this is possible in a Christian because we have been redeemed. Our fallen flesh is buried with Christ in baptism. And now we can walk in newness of life because of the spirit of the living God that was poured out into our earthen vessel when we received the Holy Ghost. Now I want to read a little bit further. Let's go to, um, let's go to verse 17. Well, let's start in verse 16. For which cause we faint not. So when, we, when we're walking as a Christian and we're not perfect immediately or we see that we need correction about something, and this happens to every single one of us, God doesn't, doesn't correct people that are not his. When we're chastised of the Lord, it shows that he loves us. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, 
For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, the promises of God, the world can't see them. The world can't see why it is we choose to obey the word of God on every single point. We keep ourselves from fornication. We do not take part in idolatry. We depart from the use of drugs or sorcery. We refuse to listen to liars. We hold everything up to the light of God's word because Jesus Christ said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is something that is hidden from those who don't believe. And those who have not obeyed the gospel think that we are foolish, that we are fanatics, that we are extremists, that we are ridiculous. And they ridicule us, they mock us, as they mocked our Lord. But when God made the world, he spoke it into being, and he said, let there be light. And now, under the new covenant, those who have obeyed the gospel have the light dwelling in them. And how do we walk day by day? We are renewed in the spirit of our mind by walking in the word of God, dwelling in his presence in prayer, in our prayer language, praying in tongues, praying with understanding, praying with tongues, seeking the Lord about every single thing. And when the accuser comes along and says, oh, but you didn't do that right, we say, yes, I didn't do that right. And now I'm going to my father to ask him to show me the way. You see, so we do not any longer need to hear and obey the darkness. We turn from the darkness and instead we stay in the light. Does this mean we never make a mistake? Of course not. We all make mistakes. But when we make a mistake, we'll become aware of it. The Spirit will show us. And then we just go back to the Father. We go back to Him because we know that we can do so. When we are a Christian and we walk in His ways, we find that there are things that in the past would have seen seemed petty unto us, that would have seemed absurd. For example, the idea that a woman covers her head when she prays. You see, a Christian may not understand, but they will obey because they know that this is what Jesus said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We also know that the commandments of God are not grievous. They're not difficult. They're, they're puzzling to the world. They don't make sense to the willfully disobedient, to the ones who don't really love the Lord. But to those who do love the Lord, it's simple. It's simple. He says, do this, and we do it, and then we have a good understanding. When we walk in his ways, when we're obedient to the scripture and what the word commands us to do, we're walking in the light. And as we learn and grow as Christians, we are led ever more. We are led ever more, beholding the glory of his kingdom more and more as we walk with him. There are going to be times when you make a mistake, when you when you foolishly perhaps think that you can have a little bit of a break or do a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And if you're truly a, a Christian, if you really love the Lord, when he corrects you about that, you will say, Father, I'm sorry. Father, forgive me in Jesus' name. And he will. So I want to close now. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1 and and let's um, let's begin in verse 5 then this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, 
cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A Christian abides in the word of God, doing what it says. And when we make a mistake, when we realize that we've been mistaken about something, we simply turn to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive us our sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So if you've been rebellious, if you've turned away from the word of the Lord, maybe it was difficult, maybe it was hard on your heart, maybe you had doubt, maybe the enemy got to you for a season, you can still repent and turn back to the way of truth and abiding in the light of God, which is found by obedience to his word. I pray that this message has helped you, my sisters, those of you who are young in the faith. I remain here for you. You may email me if you like, or you can comment in the comment section below. May the word of the Lord go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.